MDMA was first synthesized by Merck back in 1912. This is an old drug. And for those with an interest in the history of these things, MDMA, methylene dioxy methamphetamine, was first synthesized by Merck Pharma for the treatment of blood coagulation problems. It didn't really work, it didn't really help blood coagulation or blood people who had a tendency to bleed. So it was, it was shelved. And then it was later then dust was taken off of it, it was taken back off the shelf, and it was reintroduced as a intervention to accompany psychotherapy. You know what now is Molly, of course, ecstasy, its old name was empathy. It was actually used by therapists to facilitate empathic connection and as a way to facilitate outcomes. What is it? MDMA is a substituted amphetamine. It's like an amphetamine that releases serotonin, other monoamines. It also blocks the reuptake of serotonin. It also blocks the VMAT2 protein. The VMAT2 protein is what packages monoamines presynaptically. So what happens is you get this big rush of serotonin with this medication. It was declared a breakthrough by the FDA six years ago in 2017. It has effects on many monoamines. And you can see the dose is there, 50 to 200 milligrams a day. One of the questions was, when people are going for MDMA-assisted psychotherapy, what is the first thing that's done? Well, this slide gives you the answer. They go through a preparatory session. So everyone needs to be prepped and psychoeducated. That was the right answer. Most of you got that. And I want to share with you the results of a phase three study. There's been now replicated phase three. This is late phase data with MDMA in the treatment of adults who have PTSD. And a lot of these folks have a history of depression, current or past. They also have alcohol or substance, current or past. A lot of these folks have dissociative PTSD, which is more problematic. A lot of them have a history of civilian trauma, like sexual and physical abuse, especially in childhood. This is a bad, bad condition. And we know that the treatments for PTSD currently are modestly effective. Sertraline and paroxetine are the only FDA-approved agents for PTSD. The psychosocial treatment of trauma-focused therapy, like exposure that's prolonged and, and um, uh, with CBT is considered the standard, standard treatment for this as well. But again, most people are having modest outcomes. And what's really interesting in this study, using the CAPS for DSM as the primary outcome, across 16 to 18 weeks after several treatments, there was a profound reduction in overall symptom severity as measured by the CAPS. In this very difficult to treat population, that's the symptoms, this is the function. And again, these are persons very representative. These are people with uh, PTSD for many years, highly comorbid, often trauma histories, symptoms are improving, functioning's improving, and self-reported depression's improving. Now, one of the ways we benchmark efficacy is by using what's called the effect size. And the effect size can be small, medium, or large. And the effect size, the so-called Cohen's the effect size, for sertraline and paroxetine in the treatment of PTSD is approximately 0.3 to 0.5. Not bad. 0.3 to 0.5. The effect size of ecstasy in this trial, which was replicated, is in the order of 0.9. So we're seeing efficacy, we're seeing fairly rapid efficacy actually, and we're seeing efficacy that's a very high effect size in a very difficult to treat population. And the magnitude of the effect size is instantiated, it's illustrated, in the number of people who no longer meet criteria for PTSD was quite a significant result. And again, this has been replicated. So a couple of phase three trials, replicated results, almost identical, not quite, but similar. And we saw also half a dozen phase two studies with MDMA. Of course, side effects are what we're always keeping a close eye on. It was generally well tolerated. We think about side effects, what were they? Were the side effects mild, moderate? Were they severe? 
Did the side effects lead to treatment discontinuation? For the most part, we had a fairly well-tolerated treatment. Some people get some tightening of the jaw, some increase in blood pressure, maybe an increase in temperature. But taken together, it wasn't uh, unacceptable. There were ideation of suicide. This is an at-risk population, but nothing that we would not expect in this type of population. So overall, was certainly very favorable. This is a pooling of data with MDMA. This is going back to more of the earlier trials. The one I just showed you was just published recently. But in medicine, it's about replicating. Can we replicate the finding? And can we replicate the finding and obtain an effect size that was what somebody else also reported? So we're not only seeing replication of MDMA's efficacy when combined with psychotherapy in PTSD overall, but the effect size magnitude has also been replicated as evidenced by the percentage of people who no longer meet the criteria for PTSD after the treatment because they're in full remission.